In this video, I want to talk about subnets in classical flow-based programming from a, both a design and a implementation point of view. And I'll be using as my base Ralph Westphal's idea of the coding dojo. Now, one of his types of application is what he calls an agility kata. You will notice that this website is mostly in German. But if we go down to where the agility katas are shown, uh, this one is called um, CSV Viewer, and it's five iterations. Iteration one, click on that, and you get this. And the idea is that you have a CSV file, comma, separated uh, view, and you want to turn it into a bunch of pages where the columns are lined up. And there is um, one letter code which determines what the next action is. So you read the file, you chunk it up into pages, you store them somewhere, and then there's a interactive section where you display a page and then go to the next one as controlled by a code, a letter code. In iteration two, a very similar uh, design, but he added the ability to jump to a specific page. I actually used the same design for both iterations, and I want you to believe that I did not cheat. It was simply that iteration one in flow-based programming seemed most logically designed using a particular flow, and it was very easy to change that flow to support iteration two. Flow-based programming stresses maintainability of code, and that's exactly what the Agility Kata is uh, evaluating, is the maintainability of the code that the students were supposed to implement. Now we're going to start talking about the concept of subnets in FPP, which is a central concept and dates back to Wayne Stevens's work on structured analysis. Originally in FPP we laid out the charts on very large pieces of paper and so size wasn't a problem but grasping the whole flow could be a, a little confusing. This picture is actually a third of an application that was running for about 40 years in a Canadian bank and um, you can see that there's a fair bit of complexity there. So Wayne Stevens came up with the idea of combining his concept of structured analysis, uh, which supported top-down design with the concept of FBP. Based on this idea, in our next implementation of FBP, we allowed charts to be built in a hierarchic form, working top-down. And then when this was converted to running code, it would be exploded into essentially a flat network. This worked pretty well for several years, but then we thought it'd be really nice if the subnet could be packaged as a reusable component in its own right. This led to the idea of um, shown in this picture. This is described in considerable detail in my book in Chapter 7, which is called Composite Components. Here's a picture of the idea, and um, what makes it a little different is that there is actually a separate component that controls the subnet. There's also two specialized components one that looks after the input to the subnet and one that looks after the output to the subnet. And they have a unique ability, which is that they can reach up to the input ports of the mother, or in the case of subout, to the output ports of the mother. This means in turn that the subnet can be packaged as a, a reusable component in its own right. It's coded just like a normal network, except that it has a um, it's an instance of subnet rather than of network. And um, 
It actually behaves internally exactly like a regular application, except that it has the component that controls it, which I called Mother. It's actually called the Subnet Manager. It has the unique ability of being able to revive this network after it dies. And it dies in the same way as, as you will remember from earlier videos, when all of its input data has been processed. The other um, potential of this design is that, that the subnet manager could actually load in subnets dynamically instead of being linked to them. And that means that you could then feed in subnet names over another port and this would trigger the loading of a new subnet which would then get control and run, terminate, and then this subnet manager would wait for another name. We'll now go back to the Agile Kata application that we talked about earlier. I have drawn a flat uh, FPP diagram, which unfortunately will not all show on the video. So I'll have to pan around it to show you the different parts. As I've shown on the network, over on the left hand side, we read the CSV file and feed that into the rest of the network. And we'll gloss over the question of where it is physically, whether it's on a local drive or out on the net. Uh, so this, you could think of this block as actually a, uh, a subnet, which will be expanded later. This is the uh, part of the system where it chunks up the file into individual pages and uh, stores them somewhere. Uh, so with a page number associated and you loop back and, and get the next X records where X is the page depth. And this, we're in pan mode right now. You see the, uh, this uh, box is enabled for pan. So I can do this. And here's the interactive part, which is again, very schematic. Um, display talks to a human and read reads from the human. And basically if it's a letter, it'll be either next, previous, first, last, or J, which is page number. And X terminates this loop, you come out. One other thing I should mention is these mysterious blue blobs here, here, that's come out of pan mode, here and here. They refer to uh, FPP's automatic ports. These are ports that uh, are not explicitly mentioned in the network. But if this is enabled, um, a, a trigger comes, is generated when this block, this process terminates. Uh, it sends a signal along this uh, automatic port line. This is the sort of the same thing in reverse. This means that this process will be delayed will not be allowed to start until a signal arrives here. But again, this process doesn't have to know about this port. So there are sort of reserved names, if you want to think of it that way. We were talking earlier about uh, top-down design or structured analysis in combination with FPP. Um, I want to uh, show a technique that kind of works the other way. Let's say that you have a rather large diagram and it's getting out of hand and you want to start splitting it up into subnets. You can work from a larger diagram and chop out subnets. And there's a facility in Draw FBP to do that, which I call Excise. So I've panned so that this is sort of down in the middle of the picture. I'm going to switch the pan off. Now you select enclosure. Enclosure is 
a kind of a general function that is used for marking off parts of the diagram. So let's create an enclosure up here and drag it down a little. Now you can drag the corners and position them where you want. Now you'll notice that two of the arrows actually cross the border of the enclosure here and here. So enclosure, right click, has a function called excise. When I select excise, I have to enter a name for this subnet that I'm going to generate. I'll call it paginate. And that whole piece we cut out has been replaced with a subnet called paginate draw with the, um, the ports connected. If you now go over to this other tab, paginate, this becomes the main window and the one you came from is now just a, a tab. If you, uh, you can't see um, all of this right now, so I'm going to pan it a little, bring it up. You'll see that the arrows that crossed over the enclosure border have been uh, connected to, these are external ports. This is an external port in, this is an external port out. Uh, this needs a name so that it can talk to the mother component. So we'll edit the item and I'll probably just call it in for now. Uh, but you'll see it's displayed in red to indicate that it's different in kind from the ports that are attached to ordinary components. Do the same thing here, edit item, that'll be out. Now I just want to show you generating the Java network so you can see what happens to these external port names. So we'll do that, generate Java network, valid port name, input port to out, And you'll see that we got component sub out and another component called sub in. And the external names are IIPs for sub out and sub in. The rest is expected because we didn't fill any component names yet. So far, I've talked about taking a larger diagram and excising subnets from it and turning the reference to the subnet into a single subnet block at a higher level. I want to talk briefly about more conventional top-down design using Wayne Stevens's structured analysis concept. And I've set up the CSV viewer as four major blocks. Let's say paginate, you want to expand that. So the function you use is a signed subnet diagram brings up the um, file chooser menu. You have a choice. You could use the existing paginate that we actually constructed earlier. Just click on that. That brings it up into another tab. And then you can jump back and forth between the high level and the paginate. You could even take an image of this and uh, store it somewhere so that you could be looking at them both at the same time. The other thing you could do is assign a subnet, but use a name that doesn't exist. So let's just call it um, STUV. And you get basically a blank drawing area, but it's going to preload it with two external ports just to get you started. So you need a name for the first one, which will be the input one, and a name for the output one. And you can add in blocks as you feel like it. So that's pretty much it for subnets and uh, thanks for watching.